Not everyone's heard of ska music, but if it hadn't been invented, we'd never have had groups like Madness, Bad Manners or even The Specials. So how did ska come to have such a huge influence on music, especially here in the Midlands? Well, we've been to find out where it all started. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. This estate in Leicester was the home of a legendary musician and songwriter known as the godfather of ska. Laurel Aiken rides again. He influenced a generation of musicians. This man lived, breathed, eat music. I looked up to when I was a child. Without them, I wouldn't be doing this type of music. I wouldn't have been in the music period. Laurel, Laurel is still the godfather. Yet most people have never heard of Laurel Aitken. That's the godfather pause. And what brought him to Leicester in the 70s, the place where he was to spend the rest of his life? He really felt like Leicester was his own home. He could have gone back to London or Birmingham, but no, he wanted to be here. My name is Laurel Aitken, and I was born in, in Cuba. When he was 11, Laurel's family moved to Jamaica. I used to work for the Jamaican Tourist Board over there, welcoming a tourist to Jamaica. I used to have this big brown hat, straw made out of straw, and I was shaking the maraca and singing, Welcome to Jamaica. In the 1950s, American music was dominating the airwaves. In Jamaica, the music they heard on the radio was influencing traditional calypso and mento musicians, and a new style of music was born. They called it ska. One of those listening was Laurel Aitken. Before reggae, before Bob Marley, these were the pioneers of Jamaican music. He had the first Jamaican hit in the Jamaican hit parade and it was there for 11 weeks. And then I decided to, to come to England to try. Within a year of landing in, in England, um, Laurel um, released the first single on the Blue Beat label, uh, the first singles on Black Swan, the first single on the Island label. That was just the beginning. In the 60s, he released over a hundred singles and was at the forefront of ska in its heyday. All they want is to find out if you got money. Money, everybody wants money. But I was one of the ones that didn't make any money. And come home to you. But your head. He started off with a beat. I mean, he'd props go to bed and he'd always have his dictaphone at the side of the bed. And he'd be laying there and all of a sudden I'd feel him dum 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 in this tune. I said, What are you doing? N nothing. Shh. Sh and he, he'd put this tune down on the thing. That was the bass line. And then he'd go into his room the next day, start playing keyboards, and that's how he wrote his stuff. And then the words came after. He was a prolific writer, you know, writing about situations, about women, about politics, about general things. That's how, you know, music was. But no one could have foreseen what was about to happen in the late 70s. A wave of ska bands came along, heavily influenced by the early ska musicians like Laurel. They called it Two Tone. The success of this next generation of ska bands like the Specials from Coventry gave Laurel's music a new lease of life. Bat Manners even covered one of his songs, Sally Brown. He started to do, to do interviews and we mentioned about Roland Alfonso, um, Laurel Aitken, Tommy McCook. So it's obvious that they're going to go back and find the original. So in his 50s, Laurel was doing more gigs and getting his music played on the radio again. 
That's on I Spy Records, Laurel Aitken back again, this time with Unitone. He would headline huge festivals in Madrid, Barcelona, but also in places like Japan. He recorded with the Scar Flames in Japan. Boogie in my bones! I used to say to him, you know, don't you think it's time you packed it in? No, no, I'm all right. And that was it. While he was happy, I was happy. January 2005, Laurel's last concert. He died in July. His funeral brought together musicians he'd worked with throughout his life. Many of them came to Leicester to pay their respects. 30 years now since Two-Tone, and in Coventry, a scar trail's been set up. Here, too, all roads lead back to those early musicians like Laurel. Well, if, if it wasn't for people like Laurel Eakin, Derek Morgan and, and Prince Buster, there wouldn't be any scar, there wouldn't be any songs. You listen to special music, right? Where do we get all our influence from? 100% that without people like Laurel, we wouldn't be here today. It's too late. Nine of Laurel's albums have just been re-released and preparations are underway for an exhibition at Leicester's New Walk Museum to remember the city's scar legend. So for Laurel, the godfather of scar, his music plays on. It's the conquering music. For the Jamaican music, is a very important guy because he influenced a lot of the young artists in Jamaica and the ones in England too. I've got the boogie in my bone. It's good music and, and he, he was a, a good person. So I think the goodness from Laurel will always be with us. I think that he will be remembered forever for his smile, his music, and most of all, his songs. Sorry I had to go, but we all have to go sometime, don't we?